Around the world, Royal Caribbean International is renowned for delivering memorable vacations aboard the most innovative cruise ships. For more than 50 years, these architectural marvels have been designed with thrilling guest experiences, industry firsts, and the latest technology. From surf and skydiving simulators to robot bartenders and sustainable efficiencies. But before guests can make memories on board, these revolutionary ships must be thoughtfully designed, built, and then safely delivered to the open sea. For that, Royal Caribbean partners with expert shipbuilders like Meyer Werft, one of the largest and leading shipyards. The relationship between Royal Caribbean and Meyer Werft spans over 20 years, and together they've constructed numerous record-breaking ships, including Quantum, Anthem, Ovation, Spectrum, and Odyssey of the Seas. But here's the catch. This particular Meyer Werft shipyard, built in 1795, is located inland in the small town of Poppenburg, Germany, more than 32 kilometers from the nearest ocean. In order to get ships of this impressive size out to the North Sea in the Atlantic Ocean, they have to travel down the Ems River in a process called conveyance. And that is a long and arduous journey. Starting in Poppenburg, each ship's conveyance is a slow trek that takes more than 10 hours to complete. The Meyer Werft crew has to carefully navigate the narrow winding river, maneuvering under power lines, over a highway, and through opened bridges, all without making contact with the sides or bottom of the river. But for Royal Caribbean, that trip is worth it, so they can work with the best in the business. The Mayerberg shipyard is located inland, so it's protected away from the North Sea uh, brutal weather. So it's quite unique in that respect that it's not a coastal shipyard. It was done this way historically because they built river transit vessels. So as the company Mayerberg, the Mayer company, started building bigger ships, they maintained their traditional location of Papenburg. The conveyance like represents the significant end to the project. A lot of the people that are living in the surrounding area have been directly involved with the project when the husbands, wives get to show the ship off to their families. Yeah, shipbuilding is a big part of life here in Babenburg. Meyer Werft works with thousands of residents and several local companies to build these ships. From design to steel cutting to the first time the ship floats, the construction process takes approximately three years to complete. And unlike cars that move down an assembly line, each ship is pieced together from the bottom up, with building blocks the size of large houses. They're building the ship in this fantastic shipyard where some of the ship is built inside a, a building, and then they take it outside and they continue building her, and then the next step is the conveyance. Most recently, Meyer Werft constructed Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. This quantum ultra-class ship measures 347 meters long and 41 meters wide and features cutting-edge technology, including an advanced air lubrication system to increase fuel efficiency and the North Star observation capsule, which holds the world record as the highest viewing deck on a cruise ship. When it's time for the ship to head out to sea, the stakes are high. That's why the Meyer Werft yard captain and crew are extensively trained to safely transport these ships down the river. If the conveyance doesn't go exactly right, the ship could be damaged in the process. But every conveyance is also a celebration. Over the course of the ship's construction, residents from across the region become invested in her success. So when she finally leaves the shipyard, Thousands of people come out to celebrate her journey to the ocean. It's a very emotional moment for the people of Papenburg and for everyone who's employed at Maya Werft, who have been building this ship from just the steel. And it is just a wonderful moment. It's really when the ship now will proceed out to her element, the sea, the ocean. And it's a farewell with the town of Papenburg. And it also is the first time we really see the ship moving. There's a pride amongst the people who participate and, and everybody in the region. You can feel it. 
And if you're on the ship and you look out and all the people are waving at you and they're taking pictures and they're, you know, it's like you feel proud to be part of that. And you can only imagine how how the local uh, population, and I speak German, so I, uh, you know, I got to talk to many of them. They are immensely proud. But the challenging part is only just beginning. Before these mechanical marvels can sail the world, they have to first surmount the close calls and tight turns along the way. The first challenge is the Poppenberg lock. This lock is a type of sea gate used to regulate the water level in the shipyard's basin. But because of the ship's size, there is almost no clearance and definitely no room for error. For Royal Caribbean International, our first ship in Poppenberg was in 2001, the Radiance of the Seas. And uh, she's around 90,000 tons. You know, compare this with the 170,000 tons now we have for Odyssey of the Seas. She is wider, she is deeper, she is higher. So the margins have really gone away. The passage through the lock is so narrow and, and there is only a few tens of centimeters available and we want to go alongside these rollers out from the lock in order to make the passage safe. After the passage from the Pappenberg lock, we are then, of course, heading, heading towards the ocean. The teamwork that was done to move the ship is second to none. I mean, I never seen anything like it, but I was a guest at Captain Wolfgang's bridge. It's not my bridge yet. Just fascinating to see them maneuver the ship through those tight passages. Just fantastic that they kept the ship so accurate in the channel. You know, you have very little water below the keel. The clearance below the ship is three feet plus minus one and a half feet both ways, something like that. And up in the air, there is power lines that crosses the Ems River, two places, and you have clearance of two to three meters. To be able to get that, we have retractable funnels. So they get taken down two meters. A lot of things had to be correct. All of these factors mean that the conveyance is a slow and careful process. To maneuver the ship around the winding river, she is actually guided by large tugboats. They use this method to ensure that the ship stays centered in the deepest part of the river, making precise adjustments along the way. And we have tugboats connected, one on each end of the ship. On the stern part, a uh, tugboat uh, of 9,000 horsepower, the same uh, size tugboat in the forward end. And these are basically the biggest tugboats uh, in Germany and uh, amongst the biggest in the industry. And in case that wasn't stressful enough, this journey happens with the ship going backward. The reason for it is we need to make sure we keep our propulsion system all the time in the middle to avoid any potential damage from uh, contact with the river bottom. And this is why we are backing out and that's how we control the stern part of the ship. The steering is maintained by the azipods and the bow thrusters working in combination with the tugs. So this is where the central command on the bridge uh, dictates what command they need. So the Azipod's full 360 degree rotating propulsion and steering devices combined. On top of all that, weather plays a key role in how smooth this journey is. So the Meyerwerft crew needs to make sure that their timing is perfect, with proper conditions that only happen twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. The time is set because everything depends on the moon and on the tidal conditions, so there's a lot of preparation needed. We always try to arrange the conveyance just in front of spring high water, just to explain that means a full moon and in the highest water condition inside the river. And uh, that's what our general planning is around. Nevertheless, we uh, cannot exceed some wind speed uh, limits. And uh, of course, some wind directions we uh, cannot manage because here in this area we have the problem with strong easterly winds. We can't have too much wind because of the uh, air draft of the vessel is very big and we need to make sure that it's stable during the transit and the, the water content within the uh, river needs to obviously be enough to keep the ship buoyant. Coming down uh, the river is, is really a balance act. You know, we'd like to take everything on board the ship at that time, but it's simply not possible because the draft of the ship needs to be 
less than the depth of the river. So, you know, for a ship like Odyssey of the Seas, you know, between the hull of the ship and the riverbed, it's probably 30 centimeters, you know, a foot uh, in certain areas. So we cannot put too much on, which makes the ship heavier because then the ship is deeper in the water. So we have to account for literally every kilogram of supplies we bring on board the ship so that the yard can calculate the total weight of the ship and make sure we don't get stuck anywhere. The crew also has to plan for man-made obstacles along the way. If the looming power lines weren't enough, there are bridges spanning the river that are too low for ships like Royal Caribbean's. Fortunately, there are ways to move those bridges and other hurdles out of the way. And as we pass through, we're passing uh, railway bridges, like the uh, Friesen Bridge in uh, Vienna. We pass uh, a road bridge, the Jansbergers Bridge in Leer. They have to remove a road section so they close oncoming traffic. Then we pass over the A31 Autobahn, which is the Ems Tunnel. So we go over the Autobahn. After many long hours, the ship finally closes in on the ocean. With only the final lock separating her from the North Sea and her first stop, Ems Haven in the Netherlands. There, the ship will stock up on fuel and provisions before her sea trials. The conveyance is really, that's where the life of the ship begins. Because before it's a building site, you know, the various pieces have been assembled, they have been outfitted. But now for the conveyance, suddenly there is life on board. The ship is actually moving. And the conveyance is all about taking the ship from where it was built in Papenburg to Emshaven so that the ship actually can taste seawater. And most importantly, that's needed because we need to test the ship. So we're going to be testing everything and making sure that when we take over the ship, she is safe to take around the world and the guests enjoy. Every successful conveyance is a major accomplishment. But those first 32 kilometers are just the beginning. The end of each conveyance marks the birth of a new ship and the start of a lifetime of adventure. So I was thinking about, I'm gonna be captain on this beautiful ship. And I can say I was there taking her down Ems River. And uh, hopefully I managed to stay on her as the captain for many years to come. And, and of course it's emotional. And you feel the proud of the whole team that have made this possible. If you uh, see the people uh, living around, people which are related to the shipyard, there are many people which really love to see the end product. It's a, a huge ship, a beautiful ship. For Odyssey of the Seas specifically, she will be the first of her kind to call Israel her home for the summer and then the United States come the fall. To bring memorable vacations to life for Royal Caribbean guests from all over the world. And after the journey they just went through, the rest is smooth sailing.